So, Steve, um, most humans don't die and they can reproduce now. So does this mean that natural selection has ended for humans? No, it does not. And I think that that claim comes from a very basic misconception about natural selection. It's concentrating only on the mortality. It's right. not concentrating on the reproduction. So what really determines which genes get into the next generation? Well, just look around your friends and ask how many of them come from a family with one kid, family with two kids, family with three kids. And you'll discover that even in post-industrial societies, there's a lot of variation in family size. Most of the genes are coming from the bigger families. And so natural selection is now operating mostly through differences in fertility rather than through differences in mortality. And of course, the old joke goes, how many of them had a grandparent who died in childhood? <laughs> not very yeah, many. Not very many. <laughs> <laughs> right. So natural selection is continuing to operate on humans right now today because they differ in ways genetically that influence how many children they have. That's exactly right, and uh, we have studied that in Framingham, Massachusetts. People have looked at it in the UK, in Sweden, in Australia, in Finland, and in Canada. And there are some very consistent results. Interestingly, natural selection appears to be um, shaping women to begin reproducing earlier in life. And uh, that's not too surprising when you realize that they no longer are threatened by childhood mortality. It used to be that if you had a child when you were younger, it was more likely that child would die. Yeah, or you would die. Or you would die, or both, both. Yeah. yeah. But with modern medicine, that cost has been taken away. So you think that the fact of modern medicine is changing the future of our species in that way to shift it towards earlier reproduction? Well, uh, that's part of the story. There are also strong cultural pressures for women to delay reproduction. So while biology is telling them start earlier, culture is telling them start later. The result of which is that they feel a bigger conflict between their biology and the culture they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So right now there are many people who become sexually immature not just a year or so, but even a decade or so before they actually have children. What's the significance of that health-wise, do you think? Well, one of the things we know is going on inside a woman's body is that um, her body is killing a lot of her egg cells, and that's going on continuously. It seems to be a kind of quality control mechanism. Uh, it's called oocytic atresia. And I think that uh, basically waiting 10 years means that more of that has happened. And so the population of eggs that can be drawn on for the next menstrual cycle is much smaller. And the filter that has been deciding which ones survive and which ones die has been aging. Mm. And so the filter is not as precise anymore. And so it's more are, likely that a baby that might have some problems gets born. That's right. And that's exactly what we observe. Huh. And now another thing that's happening with people reproducing later and later is that fathers also are older. And I understand that where bad mutations come from is overwhelmingly fathers, not mothers. That's right. And that's because of a very interesting difference in the biology of eggs and sperm. The eggs are all formed very early in the life of the woman when she's a three-month-old embryo. And they don't divide after that. Some of them are killed, but the ones that survive don't divide. So they're all made by what age? By the time the mother is a three-month-old fetus, all of the eggs are For made. For the next generation? For the next generation. That's pretty early. That's right. And doesn't it provide an interesting avenue whereby a grandmother could be having an effect on a granddaughter? Dennis, but the sperm are not all made then. They, nope. could, they couldn't be or they'd <laughs> fill up the entire... Well, no. Uh, the sperm are made by continuous cell division. And so by the time a cell uh, ha is dividing to make a sperm in a 50 or 60 year old male, it is divided thousands of times, and every such division is an opportunity for a mutation. And that is why many more mutations in the human line come in from males than from females. Does this make you worry at all that if things keep going for people reproducing at older and older ages, especially with males, that there are more and more mutations that are going to be accumulating for our species? Uh, there probably will be, and I think people will notice, and it may be that men will start freezing sperm when they're young. That's a possibility. Um, I don't know. But yes, we certainly know that older and older males are contributing more and more mutations to the germline. 
However, another interesting thing has happened, and that is that marriage patterns are changing. It used to be, say, in the 19th century, when uh, maternal mortality and childbirth was really quite high, that a man might be married to three different women in succession in the course of his life, simply mm -hmm. because his wives were dying in childbirth. Now, however, it's much more likely... Or vice versa. I mean, men dying as well. Not so much the men. Really? No. No, the men... Uh, or in childbirth, the women were dying. Th this is because women were at very high risk of death in childbirth. So they had a kind of serial polygamy. Uh, but that I has changed. The question just, so that those deaths in childbirth were not in really ancestral environments. Those were in middle environments, possibly, where childbirth was more dangerous because of medical practices. Is that right? I suspect that that was a scenario uh, It might have started with uh, the big cities that resulted from the, the agricultural revolution. Yeah. So something on the order of, say, four to 6,000 years, oh, that kind okay. of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and certainly in the 19th century, the hygienic conditions in maternity hospitals it's were more horrific. More dangerous than yeah. giving birth in a field. And that's right, yeah. yeah. So that's changed now, and because of that change, women tend to stay married to the same man for much of their life, more frequently. Um, and I think that some of that difference is disappearing. Divorce, of course, qualifies that. Right. Good.